Hey everyone, I uh, just wanted to make a quick video about how to approach making a spring for your uh, pen project. Um, so this is actually going to be really easy because we have a primitive in Maya called the helix primitive. So a helix of course is just a coil type looking thing, it basically already is a spring. Um, and we're just going to play with some of the little settings we have over here in the inputs menu and we're going to be able to really quickly get the shape of a spring and we're going to end up using making three different pieces uh, at different widths um, and then combining them together to form one spring. So um, I'm going to bring in my reference images first before I make this so I can see what my spring looks like on my pen. Oh, that was weird. So I'm going to set my project, find the correct folder. So set my project so that when I um, create my free image plane and go to my attribute editor, it goes straight to where I put all of my reference photos. And find the right one that has a spring. This one does have the spring in it but I took a specific picture of the spring. Uh, I guess I'll use this one since I put both of them next to each other. So I'm going to open that. And I'd like to model from the top down. Um, so looking down in the y-axis like this. So I'm going to rotate my image plane. And I'll put this slightly uh, above the grid just so that we don't have that grid on top of it. Okay, um, so uh, this is kind of just conceptually how to make a spring, so I'm not going to like measure it in, in millimeters and whatnot. You guys can do that yourselves for your specific pen piece. Uh, I'm just going to use these reference images to get a good idea of what my um, shape should be. So I'm going to model it, by the way, of this one on the right, uh, because uh, if we were if we wanted to animate this, it'd be much easier to animate it compressing into itself instead of trying to pull it back out. Um, so, okay. So we notice that there's a top tightly wound piece and there's also a same thing on the bottom. So we are going to be need basically two identical helixes that look like that. And then we're going to make a third helix that is in the middle where the springs are more uh, further apart. And it's going to be a little weird because it's one unbroken object in real life, so at some point it just starts becoming wider with no clear indication, really. Um, so we're just going to kind of use our best judgment. All right, so I'm going to create my helix. When in the middle of my scene, so I'll move it over here so it's up above my image. And I'm just going to start by rotating that. 90 degrees as well. Now for this I'm actually going to look from my top view camera. So I'm going to go into this camera and I'm going to press spacebar to go into this. And now I can start using my inputs over here in the side to adjust these settings. Now if we count the coils we have one, two, three, four, five, six, basically six um, coils. So I can type that in. Height um, is going to be how stretched they are. We'll play with that last. Width is how wide it is uh, horizontally, and then radius is how, uh, the, you know, the diameter of each individual coil here. So radius, it looks like it's going to have to be pretty small. Um, I might turn on my x-ray mode to see a little bit better, although that doesn't help in this situation too much because the picture is dark. Um, but so yeah, I can just kind of just play around with some of these uh, attributes. Um, I feel like this number of number of coils being six is is too many. Um, it's hard. It's going to be hard to count because it's not entirely sh set in stone where they begin and end. So I'm going to kind of just temporarily just kind of eyeball this, uh, and I might also have to rotate it in the z axis to get it lined up in a different position. Um, 
but you can do what you want with it. Oh, I keep I'm getting thrown off because uh this picture uh there it's going extending down below the bounds of the picture. This would be much easier if you could actually take your spring out of the container, which you should do, but my pen had a particularly difficult spring which didn't cooperate, so Um, so I might, you know, I'm I'm not gonna spend too much time making it exactly like the picture, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this one here, and um, that's gonna be my middle piece. Now, um, I said in class that you have to create a new primitive every time you want to make another version because otherwise you'll lose these inputs. Um, however, one thing you could do instead of that would be to um, duplicate this one so we're freezing the one um, that is like this and then we can still on the original one we can then modify that um, the only problem with that is if you wanted to go back and change um, the first one you you're stuck so um, it's not necessarily the best option but that's a different way you can do it um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the uh, height and the number of coils for my um, my top piece here. And we're going to leave the width and everything and the radius the same because we do want that to stay the same. But um, we basically just want to compress this down. And I, we could even make that really tiny adjustments or something. And we have that one on this side, which is going to end up connecting. And we'll need another one on the other side, so I'm just going to duplicate this one for now. And I'll grab the one that still has the inputs, and I'll bring that down. And I can essentially just line it up pretty easily that way. Um, so um, that's the main bulk of getting this set up. Um, what the re we're going to have to do for the rest of this is pretty straightforward. We want to um, take our helix here. I will put on my solo or my isolation mode temporarily so that I can see this without any of the other stuff. I'm just going to delete this face, which is an end gun anyway, so I wouldn't want that there like that. And release my isolation mode and do the same thing on the other pieces. And I'll leave this uh for there for like that for now just to get this over with. Okay. Um so we could spend some time kind of lining these up super perfectly. We could snap our pivot point over here and, and make that lined up. But remember, your spring is a pretty small piece, and um, we're just going to end up merging these together anyway, and it's not it's not necessary that they're 100% uh, lined up perfectly, because we're going to end up just slightly modifying this. Um, so now that those ends are deleted, we can actually just grab all three of our pieces and we can mesh combine them. Just realized I'm in the rigging menu up here, so I'm going to change this to modeling and then combine my pieces. Got that history thing over here now for that. And if we smooth this with the three key, there's still a these uh, vertices aren't connected here. Um, so we want to go to vertex mode, grab this area, and I'm going to use shift right click, merge vertices and that it should now be aligned and one way you can check is if you double click a row of faces if these are merged the it will go all the way down if you look on the other side where we didn't merge them it's stopping here because this is still not connected properly so I'm just gonna grab that merge those 
just very slightly different. Um, and last, uh, last two steps. So um, first of all, this is kind of a, a sudden um, kind of shift right here. So it's curved and then all of a sudden kind of hits this plateau and changes direction. So we might want to soften that up a little bit. And one thing you could try is a tool called the Edit Edge Flow tool. So I'm going to grab these edges right here where we merge those verts and I'm going to shift right click and find my edit edge flow tool and that's just going to kind of nudge these edges over and if I want I can keep hitting the G key on different pieces so G to repeat your last tool and kind of just keep using edit edge flow um, sequentially on different pieces to get them more natural looking. Um, another thing that you might want to try is turning on your soft select um, so if I grab all these vertices here and I go to my tool settings I can um, oh, sorry I put my tool settings on the right yours are probably still on the left but uh, I can turn on soft selection and that'll stay on even when I move to like my move tool or whatever and what soft selection does is it kinda gives you this fall off radius so that um, it's selecting the things you have selected but then it's also partially affecting the things around it based on your fall off radius. So <laughs> you can see that right now my fall off radius is a bit too big because it's affecting things that are really far away. And this is a small object so we don't want that to be... we're gonna have to pump that number down pretty far. Um, so, oops. Um, so you know what, in this uh, particular scenario um, I guess I probably wouldn't use the soft select to be honest with you, but um, feel free to try using that on other parts of your pen. Uh, maybe even while we're looking at this picture, this grip part, soft selecting um, to kind of uh, scale these rounded areas would be interesting to do. Um, okay, so that's basically it. I'm going to do one last thing here, which is getting rid of this end gone on the end, because if I smooth this, it, it doesn't look terrible, but um, I still don't want that to be there. So I'm just going to really quickly... Whoop, I'm going to grab this face, extrude it in. I'm going to have to type in a number, apparently, because I'm working at a very small scale. And then I am going to choose to just multi-cut across like this. And I'm hitting Enter there. So just making that into a... Um, into a non and gun all quads shape um, you could have also just changed the cap divisions at the beginning but what do you know okay so um, that's how I would go about making a spring probably going to be one of the easier parts of your model um, and you know all your sp your spring doesn't have to look exactly like uh, the one in your thing, but you should try to get it as close as possible, so count those coils, use your reference images to get the thickness lined up and everything, and you should be good to go. Alright, that's it for this video.